So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the Elgato products in unison with vMix. I'm pretty sure everybody owns a product from Elgato or wanted to get one. A stream deck, a microphone, a webcam, a light that I'm literally using right here to light myself. Everything is so good and it works so well and has so many different features that you can use. And I'm just going to show you how everything works. So to start off, you're going to need three different things. You're going to need to download Bitfocus Companion. You'll be able to find the download links for all of this in the description. Elgato Wavelink and the Elgato Stream Deck application. So all of those will essentially work with all the tools with the Stream Deck Plus, with the Elgato Wave 3 microphone, with the key lights, with the Stream Deck, Stream Deck Mini, anything you may have. So once you have all of that downloaded, we can carry on. So once you have everything downloaded and set up, you're going to want to open Companion. And once you open Companion, you're going to click Launch GUI. You're going to make sure the Stream Deck is on and that the Elgato software is off because otherwise it won't connect. Once you have this, you're just going to click Unlock. And then here you should have your vMix set up. Boom. Done. That's it. You're going to go to Buttons. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, if vMix is not there, all you're going to do is type in vMix and click Add. And once you type that in, you click here. Make sure your target host is the IP of your computer. But if you're trying to connect over the internet, it's another PC's IP if they are port forwarded and have the port open. So now that you have that, you can go over to buttons. And as you can see, I have a few pages set up already. This is my replay page that I have. And this is my page one that I'm using, which is empty. Now, the way the Stream Deck Plus works is, as you can see, I have two rows of buttons. I have a touch screen and four dials. So essentially row one, two, three, and four are the same as row one, two, three, and four. Row four are the dials, row three is the touch screens, and row one and two are the buttons like on a normal stream deck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a vMix file that I already have, which is a podcast, as you can see right here, and I'm gonna essentially use the stream deck to its full capability with companion to make it adjust audio levels, make it automatically run the show, unmute casters, and do things like that essentially. So I have a few triggers set up already, but I'm going to lead you through how everything works. So let's open our companion here and let's start off with the dials. You're going to click create button. We're going to do a master volume button. So once we have the master volume button set up, we're going to go to our rotary actions. Make sure this is enabled. You're going to click on this. On the rotate left, you're going to type in volume and do set bus volume. Rotate right, you're going to do the same thing, set bus volume. You could do a bunch of other functions, but this is what I'm using to control the master volume here. Then on the rotate left, we're going to make it decrease the audio. So adjustment, decrease five. Then we're going to go to rotate right. We're going to increase volume by five. So now when I spin the dial, as you can see, my master, my master bus is going up and down. So now I have this dial set up right here. The first one that controls the master volume. We're going to do the same thing on these other ones, so I'm just going to copy and paste this here. But instead of setting bus volume, I'm going to remove these. And I'm going to do input volume. So I'm going to type in input volume. And for this input, I'm going to do music underscore bed. I'm going to call this music volume. I'm going to make this decrease by five. Set input volume, music bed, increase by five. Oh, I put it in the wrong place. Let's do it right here. Volume increase by five. So now I can turn the music up and I can turn the master volume up or down. So what else I would recommend doing is create another button. This is probably a cool idea that I can give you. So let's copy this one, put it in there or the master volume, sorry. And let's take bus A. So let's say your VMix calls that you have. So here in my inputs, I have three calls. Let's say you set it up. So call one, two, and three is listening to audio bus A. So here I am. So you can make it bus A and bus A. So now, super simple. You now have a mix that you can control for what your casters are receiving or the callers. So if they say, hey, the audio is too loud for me, you can just turn it down without adjusting the master at all. So as you can see, let's say, hey, I don't want to hear music anymore. You can turn it all the way down. So now they're not hearing anything. So endless possibilities. Use this however you want. I showed you how to do it. Now you can do it for whatever you like. Now, now that we have these th three things done, let's call this caster control. 
or caller control. Here we have our music volume. I'm just going to change the font size to make it look a bit nicer. Change it to 14. And here we have our three different controls. Now, my stream link is pretty blank and I don't know what the buttons do. So I'm going to change the touch screen to allow me to do certain things. So I'm going to go to the top row, create a button. I'm going to call this master volume, essentially copy what's below. Another button, music volume. I'm just going to call it music. Here I'm going to call it master size 14. And I'm going to call this one casters or callers bus and make that 14. So now I have three different labels. And as you can see, the labels are right here. If you want to, you can put an image on there by simply going to here and then clicking on this button and you get an image in. But for now, I'm just going to have text. I'm going to change the background, make it, I don't know, um, gray. And I'll make the text black or something like that, just to be a bit more visible. So now, as you can see, it is gray with black text. So I'm going to do that for everything, just to make it a little different and spice it up. As I said, you can customize it any way you like. So I'm going to turn down the audio, turn master all the way down. And now I have these three different dials. So master volume, music, and the callers. And as you can see on the bottom right of the screen, everything is currently changing. So these three dials are super, super good and super important. Now, for the things above, I want to control my show. So I'm going to create a super simple button. I'm going to create new, and I'm going to go to my different inputs and I have my start input. I'm going to call this start or fs underscore start, which is what I have it called. I'm going to change the size of this down to be a bit smaller. And then I'm just going to have my press action to send the input to preview. And it's going to be my fs underscore start. So now when I press this button, my input will go to preview. I'm going to add some feedback options and I'm going to do preview. So tally preview state. If the input is in preview, my button will turn green. So as you can see, it's green and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add another feedback and type in program. When my input is in program, it's going to be red. So right now, as you can see, it is in preview, but when it's in red, it's red. Super simple. I'm going to basically make this for all of my different inputs. So moving on to the next one, I want my free cam. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to call this FS free cam and I'm going to copy it here. Feedback, copy and copy. So now as I press the buttons, you can see what is being previewed and what is live. I'm going to do that again for my other uh, cast is down below, so I'm going to just copy these three. I'm going to do FS Jacob and copy that across everything. So the feedback, make sure it's all there. This is going to be FS underscore Felix. Copy that there. The feedback, make sure it's all in the same place. And then FS underscore Panda. Put that in there. Feedback. Put that in there and in there. So now I have three different buttons. I can basically preview whatever I want and it works and it gives me feedback if it's live, if it's on air or not. So boom, perfect. So now I have this set up. So moving on, I'm going to add a small transition. You can go to presets, click on this and then go to vmix functions. Actually, I lied. That is incorrect. Uh, where is it? Mix one. Yeah, there you go. I'm just going to add a simple fade. So I'm going to put the fade here. So now I have a fade button. So let's say I want to fade from Panda to here. I just press it. And as you can see on program, it changes. Boom. There we go. Super simple. Um, I'm actually going to change that to a cut because I prefer that. And I'm also going to add another one here. Um, which one is it? Transitions. And I'm going to use Stinger 1. If there is one. Yeah, there you go. Stinger 1. And I'm going to rename this to Wipe. Wipe. And this will be called Cut. Boom. So now I can preview something and I can press Wipe. And boom, it's going to play my Stinger transition that I have. Super easy. I have a super simple setup. Change the audio and everything and do a bunch of stuff. Now, one really cool thing I want to show you is something more interactive with the touchscreen. Because you can press it here, but right now it's not doing anything. So I thought what would be cool is to allow audio soloing. So what you can do is you can type in solo and it will solo a certain input or a bus. So let's do this for the music specifically. I'm going to click solo input and I'm going to type in music underscore bed for the option. I'm going to do toggle. So when you press it, it's going to toggle it. 
So, as you can see when I'm pressing it, there is a small S coming up here, showing that I'm soloing that input. However, nothing's changing on the Stream Deck. So what you can do is go to Feedback, type in Solo, Input Solo, and now change the input to Music underscore Bed, and change the background color to, let's say, Red, and then the foreground color to White. So if I press this, as you can see, it goes red. So it shows it's being previewed. Now, that could be a bit of a problem because let's say you want it to show up if it's live. So you can add another feedback and type in volume, input volume. If the input volume is greater than zero, the background will be red. So when it's red, it will show that it's live. If I put it to zero all the way down, then it's gonna turn it off. Um, but I'm currently soloing it, so greater than, let's change this to music bed. There you go. So if the audio is above zero, then it's going to be red. If the audio is on zero, it's going to be blank. So you can see when your input is on and off. Boom. Now, going over to the dial button, you can also add stuff for when the button is pressed. So you're going to go to press actions. I'm going to type in input mute and click on this. And I'm going to do music underscore bed. So now, Whenever I press this button, let's turn it up. As you can see, the input is muted or unmuted. So this will actually toggle it on and off. Now, the small problem we have is it's turning up red because on the feedback, I set it up to be greater than zero. Now, one way you can fix that, just type in input mute and go to here. And if the input is muted, so let's go here, let's get rid of this. And I'll do it the same way. Audio live color, red. Audio muted, black. Or gray, whatever you have. And I'm going to call this music bed. As you can see, if I press this, it changes. So, muted, unmuted, audio off, audio on. Let's imagine that there is a lot more casters than you expected, and four dials is simply not enough. Super, super simple to do this. Just literally make a new page and just copy or add whatever inputs you have. So I'm just going to move it here. I'm going to copy all of this below. Copy, copy, and copy here. You can go here, add a button, and do page down, page up. I'm going to do page up. So when I press this on the touch screen, it will go to another page. As you can see, it's in page two now. And then on this page, you can do page down and you can just toggle between the different sources that you have. So on page two, you can change this to caster, caster one, caster two. So now you can essentially toggle between the presets that you have, change the audio here, go here, change it up, change it down. You can pretty much do whatever you like. So yeah, just use it creatively. That's, that's it. Simple as that.